Hello, my name is Ian McCall. I'm one of the editors of the Skin Cancer College of Australia and New Zealand's uh, dermatoscopy blog. Tonight I'm going to look at a presentation that was given by Dr. Cliff uh, Rosendahl uh, in cooperation with a colleague of his from uh, Poland. Cliff has been instrumental in extending dermatoscopy teaching into various European countries uh, where the diagnosis of melanoma is unfortunately often delayed until the lesion is so thick that it's metastasized before it's excised. So let's look at this case that's uh, been sent to, to Cliff. Um, and before we start, let's have a little look at the this image here because it has some important information for us. Cliff, do you want to expand on, on this particular slide? Thank you, Ian. Um, in Australia we have a, about 10,000 invasive melanomas a year and we have a, around 1,000 deaths from melanoma per year. So I'll work out the ratio of deaths per 100 melanomas. In Australia it's, it's 10 deaths per 100 melanomas. If you compare that figure to um, some European countries, it's, it's a bit higher. For example, in France, for every 100 invasive melanomas, there are 20 deaths per year. And in Poland, for every 100 invasive melanomas, there are 49, or nearly 50% death rate per year. And uh, this is, is quite different. And it seems to be the, the death rate is higher in the countries where melanoma is less common. And why is it higher? Because it's uh, much thicker when it's in fact uh, diagnosed. Is that the issue? Well, I know that in Poland, many experienced pathologists have never seen or never signed out an in situ melanoma, which suggests that either um, melanomas are not discovered in the in situ stage, or the pathologists see them so infrequently they don't recognise them in that stage. Mm. All right. Well, let's look at the uh, case that. Uh, Cliff has been, uh, has been sent. Now, the lesion was from a 38-year-old uh, who was attending his colleague's practice with a rash. Um, a full examination was uh, performed and this was the lesion that uh, the patient presented with. Cliff, what do you, what do you think of, uh, of this particular lesion, just looking at it? Well, it's an irregular lesion, both in shape and in Pigment, pigment density, um, and it's pigmented. Now, it's in an area, um, it's small, but it's in an area where you would expect it to be noticed. And, and when it was discovered, the patient was not aware that it had been there for a long time. And in fact, when her husband was questioned later, he stated, well, in that location, I would have noticed it. Um, and so it presumably is a, is a reasonably new lesion, although it's quite small. So, of course, uh, Agatha put a dermatoscope on it. Um, let's have a little look at the uh, dermatoscopic view. We'll make that just a little bit bigger. Cliff, what, what are the main features that you see in this? Well, um, the lesion is uh, asymmetrical with respect to the patterns and the colours. Um, and there is a clue to malignancy in that there are blue-grey dots and, and there is blue in the, in the structural central area. So although it's not severely um, chaotic, there, there's only two, two uh, patterns, one is, is dots, one is structuralist, it's quite asymmetric and it has a, a, a clue in blue. So um, it, it it, and unless you can diagnose a benign lesion like a separate keratosis, which you can't because there are no criteria there for one, you have to have to cut this out. Okay, so this lesion was in fact uh, excised. I understand it was excised with um, two, uh, two millimeter margins. Let me just uh, get the right uh, designation here for it. My apologies for this. Um, so what was the situation when it was excised? What uh, diagnosis did the Polish uh, histopathologist come to on this? Well, the, the Polish pathologist um, was un unable to reach a diagnosis. He stated that he thought the melanocytes were very abnormal, but he couldn't um, get enough criteria to say it was a melanoma, and he requested assistance from David Whedon, 
um, and he asked if he could send the tissue box across for David Whedon to uh, cut slides from and examine them, and that's what in fact happened. Mm. Well, it's interesting, we've had the situation before where cases that uh, initially have been diagnosed or have been given a benign diagnosis uh, in Poland, um, the dermatoscopic view uh, was so alarming that uh, we asked for second opinions here and I think the, in both of those cases the uh, uh, diagnosis was upgraded from a benign lesion to a malignant melanoma. So this was the, the background on, under which this particular lesion was sent to, uh, to David. Um, he processed it and I think this is one of uh, David's slides uh, here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger as well. Um, what was David's uh, view on this? I'll try and get up his, uh, his histopathology report. I seem to remember we, uh, we had this last night. Um, what were your views just looking at this particular one, Cliff? Yeah, well, when I looked at that, I, I could see um, some, some angular abnormal nests of, of melanocytes at the epidermal junction. And you can see those down there in, in, in clusters of, of angulated nuclei of different sizes. Um, there are also some apparent melanocytes up in the epidermis rising up to the stratum corneum, and, and I interpreted that as pagetoid spread. But those particular cells to me look fairly monomorphous. They didn't look angulated like the, the cells down um, at, at, the, at the junction there. And so I, I, I really had no idea. Mm. Um, and there was certainly a lot of uh, melanin down here, the melanophages down in the uh, in the dermis as well. Well, David's report um, was that he he wanted to call the lesion benign. He said it has some of the features of a reed nevus with heavy melanin incontinence, which is what uh, we're looking at down here. Um, he said there was a little pagetoid spread and some tightly nested cells. But instead of uh, these uh, cells being uh, composed of spindle cells, as in the reed nevus, the cells here, he felt, were quite nevoid uh, in type. And uh, although he said, I'm calling this dysplastic with moderate atypia, it's certainly not typical of a dysplastic nevus. And he commented that if anyone wanted to invent a new name for this lesion, I would be delighted to embrace it. Now, a few shrunken pagetoid cells are present high in the epidermis with pigment in the stratum corneum. So I can see um, why it, uh, to the dermoscopist, it actually looked like a melanoma. He did some other special stains uh, on this. If we uh, go to these, let me just... Yeah, those, those special stains were actually sent out by uh, Dr. Grace from Poland. Ah, right. Um, they weren't ones that David cut. Okay, so these are the ones that in fact came from uh, from Poland. Okay, so assuming this is, uh, you know, one of the brown stains, an S100, um, I suppose it was done here to see if some of those cells we were looking at before were in fact uh, melanocytes. Now, not very much is in fact uh, showing in the uh, in the uh, epidermis here. I think as David said, there was a little bit of, uh, of pagetoid uh, spread here. But the nests are quite well um, circumscribed here. And um, so I, essentially, this uh, lesion went back out as uh, a benign lesion. It didn't go out uh, as a melanoma. It's been excised with what sort of margins, Cliff? Two millimeter margins. Yeah. And did we feel that uh, this, was, uh, this was adequate in, in these circumstances? Da David Whedon said that the, ex the excision was complete. And then, in his opinion, nothing further needed to be done. It was benign, and even though he thought it had some malignant potential, and that he he thought it was unstable, and he did make the comment that in 12 months it may well be a melanoma. He he said nothing further needed to be done, and it had been fully excised. Okay, so really, I think this is a this is an excellent case, and it also uh, I think illustrates the importance of um, interaction with people uh, from other parts of the world who perhaps don't see as much melanoma as we do. An interesting thing that uh, I guess I was saying that was happening in Poland was that in January next year there'll be an article about dermatoscopy and melanomas in Poland in the Gazeta uh, Lekarska. This is a weekly doctor's news magazine with a circulation of over 150,000. 
And what will be in there will be a Chaos and Clues poster in Polish will accompany every magazine. Now, Chaos and Clues is a marvelous uh, algorithmic system that Cliff uh, has developed for quickly analyzing pigmented lesions. And if uh, you want to see that, go to the Melanoma Signature uh, website, which is www.melanomasignature.blogspot.com. And uh, there's marvelous information there, not only on Chaos and Clues, but on a lot of other things. But let's look at this Chaos and Clues poster that, in fact, is going, it's been translated into uh, Polish. Cliff has, in fact, managed to get this poster translated into a variety of languages. So uh, do you want to chat about this one, uh, Cliff? It, uh, it's, a, it's a great poster. Yeah, well, firstly, um, I'm only a small part of the development of this system. It's uh, Harold's system. It's, it's based on his uh, revised pattern analysis. And Alan Cameron and myself and, and Harold have been working on, on refining it. Um, so it's certainly a, a, a team effort. And you can see there the names at the top of the people. Other people have been heavily involved. Phil Chandel, the, the medical student. And in translating it, Agatha, John Ives. Um, and um, some other people more recently into other languages. So it's great. Um, because it's compact and on one page, it lends itself to translation. And it's, it's been quite easy to make up a translation pack for the people who are doing the translation and then to uh, put that back into the software and, and produce a poster in different languages. So uh, because it's a simple algorithm, an effective algorithm, it's been validated by a, a study, um, it's suitable for this sort of presentation. I think it's, a, it's been a marvellous addition to uh, our educational abilities in trying to spread the word on, uh, on dermatoscopy. So congratulations on this and congratulations to your fellow contributors as well. So folks, if you want to get more information, go to www.melanomasignature.blogspot.com and uh, I encourage you to do so and see some of the marvellous work that Cliff's been doing. Thanks for this, Cliff. We'll see you again some other Thank time. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.